Morning show at East Coast of M. Now a British government plan to end all prosecutions for killings during the Northern Ireland Troubles. It's expected to be formally confirmed today. That is killings on all sides. Northern Secretary Brandon Lewis will outline proposals for dealing with legacy issues in a statement in the House of Commons. He's expected to confirm the British government's intention to introduce a statute of limitations in the autumn and the statute would end prosecutions for troubles, killings up to the signing of the Good Friday Agreement in April 1998. Critics have said such a move would represent an amnesty. In fact, the opposition Labour Party says the government gave victims their word they would deliver the proper investigations denied to victims and their families for so long. But looks like there won't be any investigations if this goes through. On the line, we're joined by Joe Campbell, whose father, Sergeant Joseph Campbell, was murdered in Cushendall. Good morning to you, Joe. Nice to talk to you. Thanks for joining us. A very good morning, Declan. Th- thank you for joining us. Uh, tell us uh, the circumstances uh, of your dad and his murder. Well, my uh, my father uh, my father was uh, was uh, an RUC sergeant in, in the north of Ireland. He uh, he was originally from uh, from Donegal, but his father, who was a guard, was moved to Scotstown in County Monaghan, and my father wanted to join the guards way back in the fifties. Uh, they had an embargo on recruitment, so my father went north and he joined the RUC. And we got moved around a bit, uh, Declan, as as uh, police officers usually do. We were in Cross McGlen for for a couple of years. We ended up in a wee place uh, that I call Paradise uh, in Cushendall in the Glens of Antrim. And my father was murdered in ninth, February 1977 by uh, by the loyalist assassin uh, Robin Jackson. Uh, in collusion with uh, my father's colleagues, uh, some of my father's colleagues in the RUC. And has that and, been uh, proven, Joe, or is that speculation? Is there, just to, just to state the fact, I don't doubt you, but... Well, well, Declan, I mean, I, I've, I've spent most of my adult life investigating cases, as most victims and survivors, sadly, have had to do, um, because of the approach of the, the UK government. And... Uh, it, that's, it's not an established fact in law because we haven't had a proper inquest and we've got a, a civil action against, uh, against the, the, the RUC. But, you know, if I just, if I, if I just refer you to the, uh, to the police ombudsman, the police ombudsman was set up in, in Northern Ireland to investigate such cases. They had a 12-year investigation into my father's murder. And at the end of it all, they were un- unable to say who committed the murder or why it was committed. Now, the dogs in the streets know why my father was killed. Uh, and he was killed for being a good policeman, trying to do, a Catholic policeman, trying to do the right thing in, in the north of Ireland in terms of being equitable, being even-handed, without fear or favour for people's religion, colour or creed. Uh, that's why he was murdered. And under this plan there, which many people feel it's just to get Bloody Sunday and other incidents uh, per- perpetrated by uh, the British forces uh, to get them off the hook, and it just so happens that they'll have to include um, killings by the paramilitary groups thrown in. Do you, do you take that view? Oh, that's absolutely my view, Doug. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not surprised... You know, at, at, at the UK government's approach. I mean, all you have to do is look at the recent, the recent uh, inquest report on the Bally Murphy killings, where ten innocent people were murdered by the army. That that is an established fact. Now, it's no coincidence that the British government have quickly followed up that uh, that inquest result with this proposal. And essentially, what this proposal does is is give an amnesty to. Uh, to, to the UK forces and the paramilitaries, you know, and that will not go down well with, with all victims groups across I- Ireland and further afield. And essentially what it is, it's the UK government avoiding scrutiny. In, in simple terms, it's a cover-up. You know, it's a stroke, as, as we would say in Ireland. They're pulling a stroke here to try and, to try and avoid scrutiny. And, you, you know, you know, this is not about individual soldiers or policemen or, 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 or you know, who, who committed these murders. This is about the people who sent them out and gave them orders and the policy 
you know, the policy that the UK government and the army had in, in Ireland. You know, and, and ironically, Declan, the, the interesting thing about it is that, for, you know, for 45 years, the UK government has called paramilitaries criminals. So essentially, with the stroke of a pen here, in, in granting an amnesty to to, to to the forces and and the paramilitary, they have given a moral equivalence to, to all of those groups. They have put those groups on the same on the same level as 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 the security forces. No, it's, it's, mm, which, it's which you're always reluctant to do. Yeah, it's hypocrisy um, of the highest order. And you know what, Declan, I, I'd just like to say that people like myself, and there are hundreds and hundreds of people, and there are generations of children and brothers and sisters and father and mothers who've got no truth. We're only ordinary people, Declan. All that we ever wanted was for the truth. And for the government, for the government to follow up this by saying, you know, that my 86-year-old mother is vexatious in wanting to know the truth about what happened to her father, it's, it's a shame. It's unworthy of them. But, you know, the reality is, Declan, that they, they really don't care as long as they can get their own people off. They're prepared to take the flag for anything else that comes along as a result of that. They're also saying that there's a long passage of time. The establishment of any evidence that could actually stand up in court is probably unlikely. So they're recognising a reality that n- probably very few if any of the cases from the, the Troubles would ever come to court and be successful. But, well, Declan, there's a certain irony to that because I, I know that the cost and the passage of time has been used by the government as, as, a, as a reason just to, just to close it all down and, you know, move on with their lives. But here, here's the reality. You know, not another penny needs to be spent in a high court or with solicitors. Because the reality is that the UK government has got most of the information about all of these atrocities. They have, they have got the files. You know, as I give you an example, my very good friend Eugene Reavy, his three brothers were, were, were murdered in, in White Cross in South Armagh. The UK government has closed the files on that case for for 70 plus years. Seven zero, 70 plus years. So you have to ask yourself why they would do something like that. I mean, using using Reavy, an innocent, you know, a decent man, his brothers, innocent men were murdered, and the government closes the files on their case. And there are many other files like that. So 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 to say, just move on. You know, I mean, I'm a big believer in truth and reconciliation, Declan, but I do not believe that you can have true reconciliation without the truth. And it's not an awful lot to ask for. We don't need, the, we don't need, the, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the years of investigations, drawn out investigations where the government gives the illusion of trying to find the truth. They have got the truth. They've got the files in all of these cases. They know what happened. But I'm afraid they do not want the world to know what was going on in Ireland. Through, through that period that we know was the Troubles. Thanks for joining us this morning, Joe. And regards to your mother, and it must be very troubling for her to, to be hearing this news. Thank you very much for Yeah, Declan, thank, thank you very much. Uh, you know, when things like this happen, victims and survivors get traumatised another day. It's really, really sad. But thank you for the opportunity to speak yeah. to you and your viewers. And uh, regards to yourself, Joe, uh, as well, dealing with this. Thank you. That's uh, Joe Campbell there. Bye-bye. Joe uh, Campbell there, whose father, Sergeant Joseph Campbell, was in the RUC, is a Catholic in the RUC, and as Joe was telling us, he was murdered by a loyalist gang, uh, the contention being that he was a Catholic in the RUC. Right, uh, that's uh, legislation uh, being discussed in the UK at the moment. 